Right. Uh, the university is going to stop paying for its second life area so there will be no further development on it. The idea is that I'll just do a quick walk around of the library space that we created a couple of years ago for archival records. I should just explain to start with, my avatar, Gonzo Pearl, appears to have lost all his attributes, so he's become a shimmering ghost at the moment. So let's approach the library. Let's, look, let's just stand here in the square and see this really, really impressive reconstruction of the library square, I thought, which was apparently put together in no time at all by a student intern a couple of summers ago. Now, by way of background, we had a master's student, Dan Hawkins, working with us in systems here, who put together, well, the library shell had been created, but Dan filled it up with things that we thought might be useful as part of his dissertation project. So I'll just have a walk around. So immediately when I approach the library, I get a note card, giving us a bit of basic information. I think this was the only thing that existed before Dan got busy. Okay, I've been in here for ages. Dan managed to put some of the university artwork up onto the walls just to decorate it a bit. And in fact, it's quite important because when we saw Sec the Second Life Library, we realised just how much light there was potentially coming into this building that we weren't seeing at the time, and since then we've now embarked on a major refurbishment. And one of the major motivations behind that, or behind some of the design, design decisions, have been to open up the light in the library. So we have a special collections area. I gave you a note card. This is just information lifted from the website, so no great advantage to be had there over web access. So, a picture from the Barlow Gallery. Click ourselves into a web browser to look at the Mass Observation site, for instance. We have a scrolling news PowerPoint here. Special Collections books on show, another another mock PC pointing us at some of the more important catalogues. So part of, of Dan's design ethos when he did this work was he thought he would make this ground floor area useful, uh, corporately useful for the library, with useful library related things in it. There's a basement area below that he thought may be much more useful as a student area, so we would be much less prescriptive about what went in there. We'll go down there in a while. Email the library, this just sends an email. So again, it gives somebody wandering in here a way of contacting us. Another scrolling PowerPoint. an access point to the catalogue or our electronic resources or InfoSAS, which is our information tutorial. And again, at the moment, this isn't giving us any great difference over navigating the website, but it's just presenting us with a different way of finding the same information. Oh, yeah, I can't remember what, oopsie. I can't remember what this... Or how this works, but this allows us to check our borrower account. We spent absolutely ages on this. Okay, you have 30 seconds to enter your number. And this just points to a, oh, a little CGI script that we haven't used for either, so and quite obviously isn't working, but we spent, between Dan and myself, we spent a few evenings at home getting that working to start with. And in essence, it just gave, it just jumped somebody into the, the standard catalogue, looking at their borrower information. This, 
think I'm going to be able to demonstrate this, but this was a brilliant thing. Um, Sludo was or is, I'm not quite sure, a way of integrating the VLE Moodle with Second Life. And this sort of purple zone here, if you are the right user, when you pass into this area, it actually knows what your borrower barcode is or your identifier. So the, when Dan was demonstrating this, he's able to come in here and it would immediately jump him into Moodle courses of relevance to him. Uh, visitor Information Centre. Again, we just played with the idea of some information rooms where you could go. Not much going on in here, really. Okay, so that was the, the corporate part of what Dan put together. He was really excited. Oh, he was really excited when he got this lift working. I think you seem to remember you have a very ungraceful landing when you get to the bottom. Take lift to basement. That's what we want. Right, so this is now a very, very, in a very brisk fashion, thrown us out down below where we were before. We're now standing in a, a basement area to the library. <laughs> and this was an attempt to, to create a notice board that would allow people to leave messages about what they thought of the library or what they thought of the Second Life site. <laughs> For test purposes, we only got it working with sort of. Oh, that's six characters max. So it's not the most useful notice board we could have come up with. But had there been more development, we would have turned that into a more freeform site teleport station. Oh, this is quite fun. This was to uh, dump put this in here to allow people to teleport around to different areas of campus to act as a navigation point. He played for... I don't know how he did this. this ooh, he uh, created a vending machine. So you could buy <laughs> University of Sussex hoodie. Keep it. This was because Dan was uh, was doing his masters. He really wanted to assess and explore the things that could be done rather than actually deliver a, de a final service. He was much more about sketching what we had and experimenting with what we possibly could do. Some information boards down here. There was we played with ideas that people would be able to put their own artwork up down here or their own powerpoints. Group study room. We wondered, when we were still playing with the idea, whether there would be a market for people meeting, their, meeting up as avatars in a, in a certain study space and displaying a, the same PowerPoint. As far as I'm aware, it hasn't been used. I think the whole Second Life site's been very underused, but we did wonder for a while, would this become an alternative way of, of meeting up in a more virtual way? It didn't do yet, but it still might do in the future. And again, Dan created a larger space over here that he thought might be, well, called it lecture room. I'm not quite sure what would happen in here. But again, you have the ability at the front to drag your own PowerPoint on to this board. So this could have been used for virtual gatherings. I know at least one person who's been to a virtual conference. I believe. Speaker URL. Okay, like we can jump out of Second Life into a URL. Okay, a very underused area. And from a point, that's that's it for the library building and what Dan developed. He worked in a sandbox that was provided for us. So there's an area of campus that we can just go to, where Dan did all his sketching. I'm going to fly. I've done this for a while, so you have to excuse me if, if it's ungraceful. The we spent loads of time in the sandbox as we fly over behind the arts building. Here we are. Stop flying. I've not done this for a while, so I'm not, I'm not navigating as well as I used to. There's very little left in the sandbox. 
for a while this was filled up with objects that, that Dan had been playing with. These small objects are were our first attempts at creating a clickable thing. So really all that is is just a test look. We created an object, you touch it, and it then responds to the user. This was just an experimental thing. The TARDIS was my idea of a joke, and it's here now, but it uh, in essence acts as a teleport to the library. So we click on the TARDIS, if the teleporting is still working. And it takes us right back into the main part of the library. So I'm not quite sure when this is going to be turned off, but very soon I'm told. So this video walkthrough will be our only record. Which is a shame because at the time I was very excited. I thought this offered great potential for accessing information differently. But it could be that the time's not here for it or that Second Life just isn't the technology to deliver it. I'm just going to hover right here in the main square for a bit. Because it's, the Countess was put together very, very well. In a very short space of time, apparently. 